Hi, I'm Claude from Metal Shark. We are here with the drumist of uh, Megadeth. And we want to have a little interview with them. Mm -hmm. So, how are you? I'm great. It's great to be back in Milan. It's always a great place to be. So, uh, back in Alcatraz and, and I'd be chuckled. It's going to be great. So, let's start an interview. In 2010 is an important date for Megadeth. It's the 20, 20th anniversary of our legendary album, Rust in Peace. Yeah. So, can you talk about this for us? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we're really glad to be playing this record in its entirety. We've actually been playing it. We did it all in, in America, in South America, Central America, and now we're playing it in Europe. And uh, we're having a great time playing it. The crowd's really digging the record, and uh, it's still a valid record 20 years later. So, it's going over really well, and we're excited right. to be doing it. Yeah, fans are really digging it, so we're excited about it. You still kick ass. Yes, we still kick ass. <laughs> so, um, you know that your ex bassist David Elfson mm -hmm. uh, is back again after six years. Yeah. Is it only for the anniversary, or we will stay? No, he's going to stay. We, we uh, you know, we once we got back together and talked about everything and you know all that stuff, and got back rehearsing and playing, and getting on tour. He's uh, he's excited to be back, and Great. we're glad he's back, and he's he's here to stay. So. <laughs> So cool. Uh, very cool. Glad to have him back. Thank you. So, um, it's not so clear the, the leaving of your bassist, James McDonald. Can you explain us something about it? James Lomenzo. James McDonald left. Yeah. In that, and then James Lomenzo yeah, yeah. left when Alison came in. You know, it's just uh, over the course of time, it just it just wasn't working out for just you know, private reasons, you know, music reasons right. and stuff. And, and at the same time, we're getting ready to do this Rust of Peace, you know, anniversary. And it just it just made sense to have Ellison back in the band, you know. And, yeah. uh, if we were going to make a change, that was the time to do it. And uh, that's what we did. It's working out really well. The fans, you know, it's a lot of fans wanted uh, David Ellison back in the band. And uh, so it's working out really good. You know, we wish James Lenz, of course, the best. And, and he's a dear friend. He's an amazing bass player. But, you know, we made the change, and I, I think it's worked out for the better. Cool. So, at the end of 2010, you're coming out with a new album. Uh, can you talk about your new album, please? The next album that the we're going to do? Yes. Oh God, we haven't, even really, we haven't even really worked on that yet. I mean, we did, um, we recorded one song that's going to be coming out later this year. Uh, that's on a, uh, on a game. Yeah. I think it's like, Part Hero 6 or something like that. Oh, great. Yeah, so that's coming out later this year. We really can't really talk too much about it. Okay. But uh, it'll be out later this year. But we've got so much touring coming up and that we're doing right now. We're not really focusing too much on the on the next record. We're talking about it, and we've got a couple of ideas and stuff. But uh, okay. once we finish the tour, which will probably be the end of this year or next year, then we'll go back in the studio, and start writing material for the next record and stuff. So I don't think it'll come. I don't think it definitely won't be coming out until you know, 2011, maybe later 2011. Okay. We've got that one song that's going to be coming out later this year. That's on that. Uh, Great. That game. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Uh, another question could be, what cover of Nancy Sinatra in the first album? Oh, Nancy Sinatra, <laughs> yes. Why? Do you like Italian voices? That's, uh, that's a good question. I, I wasn't on that record, but yeah, that was a, these boots, that's definitely a, yeah. an interesting choice for uh, On Killing Is My Business. I think he did a really good job, though. All the yeah. covers that, that Megan has done are really cool. Yeah, but that's a real. That is a pretty weird choice for a tune, isn't it? Make it, you know, do an extra Sinatra tune and make it, uh, make it a metal tune. Who knows? You have to ask Dave that question. But yeah, it's, I think it turned out really well. I should play that song one of these days. Watch yeah, that's it. That's, cool. it. that's a really cool tune. Good Thank song. you. So um, let's talk about your mascot. Your um, Dick, yeah. Your old mascot. Yeah. How is it? Why choose to have one? Something like Iron Maiden also. You know, again, that's maybe that, I don't know if that was influenced by Maiden or not. I think it's just a cool thing to have, you know? I mean, Dio had that in the first first two Dio albums, yes. you know, had, uh, had Murray Monster on his stuff. But, you know, I don't know, something connected with uh, Big Rattlehead and throughout the years. It's been on a lot of the albums, if, if not the cover, even, you know, uh, on the new artwork uh, for Endgame. It's not on the cover, but if you open it up, of course, Vic's on the inside of it and sure. stuff. So it's just something we've had throughout the years and the fans really dig it so and, and it's really cool uh, it's really cool artwork like the main stuff you know yeah so yeah it's just something that kind of latched on and it uh, it looks good visually so we kept we kept it for really? 25 years of the band yeah it's a cool thing to have. yeah i think it's cool you know not a lot of bands have that 
You know, it's not really not a whole lot. You know, made in us. Oh, that's uh, very interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a cool thing to have. So it's it's original. Of course, yeah. Original. It is original. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, okay. I will pick her up quicker. You were super bad for with Excite a long time ago. Yeah. How it was? Again, I wasn't back. In, I wasn't in the band back then. But uh, I heard. I talked to Dave about that. I talked to Dan Wheeler, who was in who was in Exciter at the time. But I mean, they said it was a great tour. You know, it was a long time ago. It was like 1984, 1985. Yeah. I think it was right. Sure. 25, 26 years ago. So yeah, what I what I heard about that was Dave told me and, and, uh, and Dan. So that was a really good tour. So. A sort of second monster. Absolutely, yeah. You know, back then, yeah, I was really, you know, they were really heavy bands at that time, you know. So, it was, uh, yeah, from what I heard, it was a really good tour. Absolutely. Great. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, we know in the, the continuous evolution of your styles and your music. Can you tell us why you tried to, to you did before trash the melodic metal and hard rock? Why is true to so change and continue time? I don't know, I think maybe depending on what record you're talking about. Yeah, I mean every Megadeth record is different, right? Yeah, there's, no, sure. there's no two Megadeth records that sound the same, which I think is That's really good. cool, you know, instead of making the same record over and over again, that you know, every song sounds similar and after a while you can't, you know distinguish one from the other. Megadeth, that's one thing that's really cool about that this band is we can get away with playing, you know, really crushing heavy fast stuff and we can play something like Trust or kind of mix it up and have a lot of different styles, you know. With Endgame, Endgame is a really good example that we have really heavy stuff like Dark Left the Chaos in this day we fight, Head Crusher is really heavy. But then we have other songs that can rate that go insane or 44 minutes which are more, you know, hard rock, metal, not so crushing, you know what I mean? So it's, I think it's good to be able to mix different styles into the band. Not a lot of bands can do that, but we're, you know, we're really lucky to be one of those bands that get away with it. The and the fans dig it, yeah. The mega one. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, it's really cool. So, uh, well, how much time we have still? Probably a minute. Um, yes, give me do one more. Yes, one more. Ah, can you talk us about the death of Rodrigan deal? Yeah, I mean that was yeah. What can you say? It was it was horrible. I mean, um, we I know Ronnie. We we toured with uh, Heaven and Hell. Yes. In uh, 2007, we did uh, all across Canada and we did all across America with uh, with them and talked to Ronnie many many nights and uh, he was a great human being, a really nice guy and. Uh, Sure. What can you say? You know, it's uh, it's a shame that he's not with us anymore. It's a uh, yeah. big inspiration for me growing up. You know, I was a big Rainbow fan. And, sure, I sort know, of dad. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, he's a pioneer of metal. He's been been around forever. So it's uh, it's a shame to see him gone. Oh, this Rainbow him this. That's day. right. <laughs> That's right. He meant the horn. So yeah, it's cool. You know, it's cool. he's a great guy. Okay, so thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And uh, have a nice day and kick ass. We will. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, man. Grazie ai lettori di Metashop. Alla prossima video intervista. Ciao!